you're putting your feelings, your spirit into those trees and that, so that the future generations that are coming along will be able to enjoy that. And as these trees begin to grow, your spirit will grow and be help that uh, to maintain that strength for that tree. As we often say, we have scarred our grandmother, the earth, by digging a hole. And so today when we put that tobacco down, we give thanks for our grandmother for allowing for that to take place. And at the same time, we ask forgiveness for doing that. But by doing that, we get to put life back into that and bring new life to carry on new life again into the future so that these young ones will have that place for them. And from these ones, there may be other ones that will take place and grow again. This tree here. What did you say you saw? an apple one. This is a Mishiman. You guys want to come put it in a hole? I guess we got a couple strong girls here. How do you guys lay it down in there? Oh, me <laughs> Would any of you like to put some same some tobacco down in the hole? Just take a little pinch, Bungi. Yeah, you can put some of that down in there. <laughs> I want to say this because it's very important, especially in Indian communities today. Indian, in the Indian people themselves over the years went through a period where we lost a lot of our land. We were very protective of our land today. So we always go back and we always fall upon what they often refer to as sovereign rights. Okay? We want to protect our land. Okay? And in the process of doing that, we don't want anybody else to mess around with it. And unfortunately, what's happening is that we're missing out on a lot of opportunities. So I would, I would like to have you people urge your leadership and your community where to go to accept some of the ways that the people are trying to restore some of these things back into, uh, especially in the plant world back into our communities. Because we know we have a very good friend out there that we have depended upon for, uh, for our food supply, our moccasins and all of those kind of things for years. Okay? Make our drums up, make everything we need out of them. Okay? 
see them all over the highway. They like to commit suicide by hitting you on the head. Huh? Right, right in, your, in the front of your car. <laughs> That's when I'm talking about the deer. Yeah? Now, the deer has been a, a, a source of, I always say, of a, of a problem for many of us in the area of plants. Because for whatever reason, the deer really like cedar. Yeah? What I go after that, they like crazy. Yeah? And as a result of that, a lot of our cedar is being done by the wayside. You see all these guys cutting the swamps all, all, all winter long? And then you look at the deer population that we have, and then you've got all these guys in the fall that are out there, uh, what do they call that, when they're baiting their deer. Yeah? And when the deer come there to look for uh, their bait and it's not there, what do they do? They go to the nearest trees. And they start eating off all, all, everything that is there. The little maple trees, the little cedar trees, everything is taken up by the deer. That takes me back to another time when they used to say the same thing about uh, in the creation story where they talked about the rabbit and the rabbit destroyed the roses. Okay? You think about that. Today we only have what? One color rose now? White ones? White ones? I think there's two colors left. And at one time there was the, every color that you could think imaginable that was wild roses of that color. But nobody paid attention. Yeah? And they all disappeared. And they blamed the rabbit for that. And today we're looking at the deer population. And they, they too are destroyers of part of that plant. So we have to do things. So we have to open our doors to people who are trying to restore some of these kind of things within our communities to make the environment a better place for all of us. How many of you heard about the Three Fires people? Have you heard about the bundles of each of these people? You know what each one of these groups do. And you heard about the responsibilities of uh, the four races of mankind, right? Everybody knows those kind of things, right? Now, I want to say this. Being that I'm part of one one of the responsibilities that we have is the keeper of the fire. We have to keep the fire. That's who we want. But the greater responsibility that we have before that time, and it goes to every Nishnabek everywhere. It is your responsibility, as well as ours, to be tenders of the garden. That's what we were put here for, to take care of God's creation. If we do that, then we will always have what we need. And over the years, we saw a lot of people neglect that. And as a result, they have lost a lot of these things that we have come to rely upon. They're no longer here. I helps it to keep it from getting root bound so that it will spread out. Do you smell that medicine? You guys smell that? That's good.